Hello guys and welcome to this video. Now recently Namoki reached out to me because they were doing something quite exciting. They were putting together a toolkit for aspiring modders. So people that want to start in this world of Seiko modding, building their own watches uh, from parts and modifying watches and all, all the sort of stuff I do and I love doing. I'm really pleased that a company like Namoki is actually going out and trying to put together a kit to help you learn to do just that and actually just go to one place, order everything you need, and it's great. So uh, well done, Namoki, and thank you very much again for sending me all of this stuff. I really wasn't expecting this. I was expecting them to send me the toolkit for review, which is in here, um, but I did not expect that they would actually send a whole watch's worth of parts. Um, I guess the idea is in the future, they are gonna uh, supply the tools and the parts together as a bundle for people to actually have a go at building their own watches. This is something I'm totally behind. Um, thanks to Namoki for doing this. And of course, thank you for the parts and everything here. Um, I'm gonna try my best to use only the parts that they supplied. However, I already know there are a few parts and things that I'm gonna use that you may need to also add in order to build this stuff I should also add that this is a pre-production kind of kit. This sticker is not on the box. I don't know if the box will be different or whatever. They've just sent me these tools as a very first sample. They may well change, but as soon as it is available, the link to order it will be below. And of course, don't forget on Namoki Mods, uh, you can use my code Seiko Mods Dubai 5 to get a small discount and support this channel. Um, so here we go. Let's have a look at the, the tools first because this is really quite a comprehensive set and you'll see why in a minute. So it comes in a nice black case and inside, I'm just gonna go through these quickly, but you'll see me use them in a minute. Um, we've got the, the blower used to get the dust off dials and, and crystals and so on. Very useful, so good to see they've included that. Most of these kind of kits don't often include this thing. Um, this could also be used for camera lenses too. Um, what else do we have? We have um, some tweezers. These uh, are sort of forks to lift hands manually. I do use a different tool. We won't be doing that today anyway, but it's nice that they include hand removal tools. I'll probably show you those in an upcoming video. We've got a, um, a bezel or case back remover sort of knife. Um, I do prefer the other style of this, um, which I'll, I'll uh, link below, but uh, again, we're not going to do anything with bezels and crystals today. It's just going to be putting together a pre-made case. Um, we've got um, a standard sort of spring bar tool. We've got a little bamboo stick to help us move things around when we don't want to scratch them. We've got a nice um, Bergeon uh, dial protector. To be honest, I have never, I've got a set of these and I've never really used them. I tried them once, didn't really like them, but I think this in conjunction with these hand removal tools will actually be quite useful. Um, what else do we have? We have a case or movement holder. Um, this black thing here, um, that is one I don't typically use. I'm gonna use my own movement holder, which I 3D printed, dead simple. You can buy movement holders on the Moki though as well. Um, we also have a little bit of uh, this green stuff. This is Rodico putty, which is excellent for um, holding hands, cleaning dials, uh, even crystals and so on. Um, it's nice that they included a, your little chunk of that. Um, if you're just gonna build one watch, you don't need more than this. I could probably do two or three out of this small amount. You don't really need much of it. And um, what else do we have in here? We've got some finger cots. These are basically stop the oils from your, you put them on, on onto each finger separately. You'll see watchmakers use these all the time. I actually prefer just to use a rubber glove. So I'm gonna use a latex glove um, just cause it's, I don't know, easier for me to put on, I guess. Um, but you can use these if you prefer. Nice that they include them cause there's at least, this is one of those things that's a little hard to find otherwise. Um, hand setting tools. Now it's nice to see they have included the handheld type. You can see just about the um, sizes are different. It's a bit hard to show you on this camera, but you'll see me use them. Um, they are different colors to the ones I'm used to, I think. 
So I will have to just test these out. Um, but this, uh, though it's a bit scary setting hands, um, over the years I found it much easier to do it with these kind of tools. In the past, people actually used Bic by rows and take the, uh, the pen ink bit out and they just use the end of a pen lid or something like that. Um, but these are actually really um, a nice addition. You don't usually get these things inside a, a, tool, a, a watch kit. Uh, that you might find on Amazon or something. Also, a case back remov removal tool. This is a, a compact small one. You just turn this and you can set it to different sizes and you just rotate it like that. Um, again, you'll see me use that a bit later on. So quite a comprehensive set. There are a couple things I wish it had. Oh, don't forget this, this is great. Things I wish it included straight away is perhaps a better type of movement holder. I prefer just this type. Um, the the sort of vice type one is more for holding cases, I'd say, rather than movements. Um, I, I worry that it might slip, so I prefer keeping it simple with something like this. I'm gonna use a glove, like I said. Um, a cleaning cloth. Um, you guys will probably have plenty of these lying around already. I mainly use this for case parts, uh, some small pliers. These have definitely seen better days. Um, these are probably in the first toolkit I ever used, but you know when you get used to using a tool, you just go for it, even if it's old. This is a small set of needle nose pliers with a cutting kind of uh, jaw bit here as well. Those are definitely needed, I'd say, uh, for any watch kit. This thing. Now, if you've not seen this before, here's where I got it, Cousins UK. Bergeon make one as well. Um, this is just the cheaper version. This has a brush on one side, useful for cleaning. To be honest, I, I like the action of it, but I never use this thing. Um, I use this constantly. This is the best cleaning tool for crystals. You can use it on dials and hands too, but to be honest, I try and avoid that. I always use this on crystals. It, this removes smudges like nothing else. Um, so cousinsuk.com, but Hopefully Namoki might get their own version um, and you can get diff different sized pads. But the smaller one works really well. So you'll see me use that probably later in case we need to clean the crystal. And finally, a file. You'll see why I need that later. This is a, a file from a hotel uh, in the vanity kit. I, whenever you stay in a hotel, pick up all that stuff in the bathroom because these little files are actually really quite useful. Uh, and there's some other stuff in there that's useful for watchmaking. Anyway, I digress. Um, one other thing I forgot to say actually in here are, sorry, these aren't very well secured, so we'll just pop them out anyway. Um, it is a set of screwdrivers. You do want a good set of non-magnetic screwdrivers uh, if you're gonna be doing anything with movements, especially, um, and setting things like bracelets. Um, I think the red one, assuming it's universal, is one, one or 1 1.2 millimeters. Anyway, I use that a lot. Yeah, these three are probably the most common types, so it's good that they included them. So um, let's get out the things that we will probably use, and that is the hand setting tools, the Rodico. Um, we will use this guy, the tweezers. We will use the case back tool and maybe the stick, I think. And actually I will use a spring bar tool possibly as well. So I'm gonna put the rest of this away because I don't think we'll need it, but um, a pretty comprehensive kit nonetheless from Nomoki. So, um, by the way, if you like what I'm doing, you wanna check out some of my mods, head on over to SVK Watches. I'm gonna show you one of my mods a bit later on and here's another one that I'm currently wearing. Um, this is a pretty simple build and to be honest once you get the hang of this it even I'll show you it now even this level of modified watch using original Seiko parts is possible using much the same method I'm about to show you now so I'll talk a bit more about those later. So let's have a look at the good stuff the parts. So we've actually got a black 38 millimeter case, I think. I haven't actually opened these yet. Let's have a look. Now the nice thing with Nomoki is you can get a lot of cases, especially these smaller ones, 
where the crystal is already fitted. So you don't need to worry about changing crystals or getting a crystal press. That's quite a big thing, sometimes hard to uh, get a good quality one as well without spending more money, especially even, even if the thing isn't expensive, it's the shipping to wherever you are. All the other tools fit in a nice little box. So the crystal press, uh, the fact that we don't need it here is very helpful. There's also a crown um, included in this set. I um, can't remember the, what they call this one. I think it's one of their field watches. I'll add it below. Um, so we also have, this will be the case back gasket. I'll put that with a plain black case back. We'll add those right at the end, of course. Um, we also have a movement. I think this is an NH35. Let's have a look. Yep. So nice enough, nice of Nomoki to include this movement. It's a TMI branded, but of course Seiko standard NH35. So it's going to have manual wind and a date function, although the watch we're building doesn't actually have a date. You'll see that in a minute. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna straight start straight away, so I'm gonna put my glove on and sort this mess out a little bit. So we're gonna go a bit piece by piece here. Um, I opened the movement already, so let's put that in the movement holder. Um, again, the Moki have their own version of these, I think brass ones. I've just 3D printed this. If you do have a 3D printer, very easy to find movement holders online. Uh, just download and print, dead easy. So, um, this watch is a three o'clock crown position based on the case we've got. Um, so we next need to fit the dial. So the dial is in here. Now, this is a really cool dial. It's like a stealth, a loomed dial, but there is no date. Now, don't fret. You don't need to change anything about that. The date can just run underneath the dial. No one will ever see it. No one will know it's there. Um, but uh, we will... Um, need to modify this dial slightly to make it fit. And the reason for that, if we can try and pop it out, I'm not used to this kind of cushion case. This might be a job for tweezers. Let's see if I can get this stuff up a bit. Let me go get under it. So the dial you've never seen um, a Seiko mod dial, so the original dials don't have this, but on the Seiko um, aftermarket dial, depending on if you want three or four o'clock, you have these pins. Um, now, this is where you really do need the pliers because we're gonna remove two of these pins um, accordingly to what our movement looks like. So uh, this is gonna fit so we're going to basically line it up. It's going to go like this, right? So they see the hole right there. There is a pin just about pushing itself into there. But of course, the one nearer the three o'clock here um, is going to be in the way. So let's remove that. So in order to remove it, I'll move the movement out of the way for this, just in case anything flies off. I'm going to use these very old very simple, I'm gonna to have to look at the side a little bit. I'm just gonna grab it and wiggle it. Now, if I'm lucky, it'll come clean off. You can see there's a little bit of a bump. No, I wasn't lucky that time. So on the other side, this is how I do it. Okay, I, I, there was two there before, I got rid of the first one. So if I rotate it, there's two here, I'm gonna get rid of the first one again. So I'm just gonna wiggle it. Now, apologies to any watchmakers or seasoned Seiko modders watching this. Um, I'm sure my methods are in some ways simpler, quicker um, than uh, the professional way to do it. I'm by no means a professional watchmaker, but I do, uh, I just do things that seem to work. So we've got two little bumps here and I'm gonna get rid of them using the hotel nail file. For this, I'm just gonna shift that out of the way a little bit. 
Um, in fact, I'm going to do this elsewhere because I'm worried about the dust from this metal getting onto the other parts. So basically what I'm going to do is just rub like this. Um, but let me do that and then I'll return with a nicely sanded dial. Right guys, so you can see, in fact I'll use this here and here, we've sanded them down. They are very smooth now. I have just been blowing it with the um, blower to get rid of any dust off the front of the dial as well. Usually aftermarket dials are pretty robust, so you don't need to worry too much about scratching them, but um, best not to touch the top of the dial at all. Um, but this method uh, always works for me. Um, you can see the dial is probably made of brass. Um, don't worry, it's not gonna rust or damage uh, underneath the dial as long as there's no dust on here. All right, now let's bring the movement back in. We are going to put the dial onto the movement. Now notice I'm also not wearing a glove on my right hand. I find it a little easier sometimes to pick things up and use tools without the glove on the right hand. Um, but that's just personal preference. I'm trying to do this through the camera. I think I've just about got it. So there's two pin holes, those two pins that were still there. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, it's gone in. So you can see now it's nice and flat up against that gray disc, uh, that gray bit at the side of the movement. So there you have it. Now we have a dial on the movement. That's it, you don't need to glue it or anything. Uh, blast it off a bit. Now, now, if this was a date movement, what we'd now need to do is turn the crown until the date changes and then we would install the hour hand. For the sake of this, we don't need to worry about it because there is no date display, even though there is a date inside it. Um, so we're gonna add the hands next. This is often the most intricate and tricky part, which causes the most <laughs> frustration. Um, and these hands uh, may be a little tricky to do, so I'll see. Um, um, but I will try my best to use the tools supplied anyway, rather than my own ones. Uh, so these are actually skeletonized hands that are also loomed all over. Um, so these will look awesome on that dial, that dial. But um, let's see about actually installing them. So this is, let's see first about opening this case. Okay, they've got a little bit of tape on it, that's why. There we go, okay, good. So I like that they've presented them on this little pad for us. That's gonna make our life a bit easier. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. Again, doing this from the, through the camera is not always as smooth as in person, but I will try and show you as much as I can. So I've got my Rodico out and I'm gonna take the hand just like so, and I'm gonna place it it makes it even harder that everything is black there. But I'm going to place it as close to, to be honest, for this it doesn't matter, but I'm going to try and place it pretty straight up there. Um, next, I'm going to take the appropriate hand setting tool. Now, for, let's see them. So you should be able to see green, the black, I don't think they have measurements on them. It's usually a gray one that I use. Yeah, these are all smaller. I think it might be. Let's try, let's try the largest, I think the green one first. So I'm gonna try and get down the side here. Seem to go on okay. So quick check from the side, you can see it's gone on there, but it's pointing up on the left, on the end of the hand a little bit. So I'm just gonna press it again and push more forwards. See, that's better. That was actually quite good. 
I'm pretty impressed with these. So now this is again perhaps quite unusual, but I'm going to set it to six o'clock. That already looks cool, doesn't it? I'm going to go to six o'clock and then set the minute hand. Make sure it's the right way around. Now again, I'm trying to place it right on that pin. Now, the closer you can actually get it to exactly six, the better. Now, they do have a habit, if you're doing it this way, um, they do have a habit to move a little bit anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much. Now, let's see, I want the next one down. It's too small, I think it might be the white. Oh no, the black. Let's try the black one. Again, I'm just uh, probably quite hard to see down there because of the color of the dial. Oh, that felt good. So I don't know if you heard, even heard that little click as it popped on. So looks good to me. Straight up at six. So when you rotate, Okay, same kind of somewhat issue with the minute hand, less noticeable, but it needs to go down forwards a bit again to the towards the end. So I'm going to just try push it just a little bit more forward. And this is something that you can do with these hand setting tools that you can't do. I'm just trying to look at look at a black background. Usually I'd use light for this, but we don't have much light here today. Um, before I continue, I will just check there is enough clearance between them, but it looks to be working okay. It looks really good that, especially on the camera. Um, now, obviously the test is, does it line up at 12? And, oh wow, almost perfect. But to be honest, Seiko movements do jiggle a bit. As, and the printing in on dials, like you can see it there, look. I'd say that is pretty much spot on. I'm very happy with that. And let's have a look against some light just briefly, and I will show you how I fit the second hand, which perhaps might be a bit different to how um, someone else does it. Okay, so it all checked out fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and fit the second hand. Um, so I've got it upside down there. I'm gonna squeeze um, about maybe one and a half, two millimeters worth. Now probably more like one and a half millimeters of Rodico into a little flat bit. I'm gonna pick it up by the end underneath. Okay. Then I'm gonna place it. I'm gonna place the Rodico on the dial and try and cantilever the pin of the hand in. Now you can control where this goes just by pressing on the actual paste or this, this stuff, not in the hand. You don't really want to be bending the hand. Let's see if I can get the close up of that. So I'm just trying to sort of maneuver it so that it's right on the pin. There's a tiny little pin there and you can usually sort of steer it around. Once you've got it, in an appropriate place, which I think is something like that. Then we're gonna go for, now I was hoping there would be a completely flat um, pin here. I don't think there is, let's see. So I'm just looking through the other tools to see if there is a completely flat one, because I prefer that, but we'll try, we'll try with what we have. So I'm using the brass one, which is the flattest, simplest one. And we're just gonna, again, push down gently. Now it felt like it went in then. Um, it doesn't always happen first time. Sometimes you need to sort of push, it doesn't go. And then uh, all I do is wiggle it here and see if it comes off. 
and it doesn't come off now. Look. So next we just pull that away and we check it out. Now clearly it is not in properly yet uh, and it's pointing down a bit so we're going to go and try and push it back but just by pushing it in more it should work okay. That's better. Oh, that's actually quite good. So the back of the hand looks a little higher, so I'm just going to press that down a little bit. But always you're just checking the clearance between the hands. Um, I'm quite happy with that, uh, considering I'm using tools I don't usually use. Um, I'm pretty happy with that and also the sort of style and colour of these hands. Um, they look like they're almost going to float there. Now, I'm just trying to find the place where I stuck that Rodico before. I actually can't remember where it was. I think it must be up here. So let's try the hands moving. Give it a wind. Remember this will be stop seconds, which is actually easier to work on because the second hand isn't trying to move when you're setting it. Um, you can see a little bit of dust on the dial. The Rodico didn't seem to leave any mark, but I will uh, obviously clean the dial before I fit it anyway. So you can see there was a bit of dust on there. We'll get rid of that. And then you can also use the supplied Rodico to just dab on the dial. Um, try use a clean bit, of course, but if you've got any fingerprints or anything on there, it will go. So that's looking good. I'm quite happy with that. Now, the next bit is going to be fitting it into here. Um, so to do that, what we're going to do is, this is somewhat tricky. We're going to have to remove the crown whilst all of this is happening. Um, now, I do use a different tool for that, which I don't have um, right now, and that's just a, a spare crown stem, a spare one of these. Um, so if, you, if you've got an extra movement or something, you could do that. Um, but we will try and do it with a spring bar tool. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> hold the movement <clears throat> in the air. As long as I'm not touching the hands, they can carry on as normal. Um, what we're going to need to do is press on to this pin, this hole here, just above the crown, whilst pulling the crown. Now, let's see if I can do this. I think I can do it. Let's uh, just push that in and yeah, crown's fallen out. Good. That wasn't too hard. A um, little nerve wracking because you're holding the dial with all the hands that you've just spent time setting upside down. Um, probably better to do it on, on top of something soft. So now we are going to prepare this to be put in the movement. Now the other thing that it would be nice to have at this point is a, is a casing cushion. Um, I don't have one of those here. I'm just going to use basically the flat table. There's nothing wrong with putting your movement on something like this. Um, we can always blow out any dust that might have picked up on the rotor or something later. Um, um, but yeah, a casing cushion is a bit better. Then the case, we're going to remove the crown. This is a screw down crown as well. Um, and here is the time to check for any dust scratches, um, well, not scratches, but smudges, dust or anything on both dial and case before we um, assemble it completely. Um, this is going to be well, actually, the hard stuff is over. The second hand was probably the hardest thing, or cutting those feet off the dial. Now, this bit should be quite easy, um, as long as everything is clean. Because believe me, if it's something not clean in there, especially on a black dial, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to keep taking it out and fixing it constantly. It's gonna be, it's gonna drive you crazy. So make sure everything is clean. To do that, you can use, of course, your standard cloth. So we're going to give that a good wipe. It's a little hard for me to see here properly, so I will check this under a really bright light myself. But um, usually 
what case sets like this, the underneath of the crystal is already really clean. So I'm not actually going to clean it this time. Um, in fact, I will, just why not? I'll show you this tool. So let's zoom out a second. This tool, if you might remember from the beginning, this is a, I can't live without this thing anymore. Uh, ever since I discovered it, I couldn't stop using it. So I really hope Namoki do include this, but basically you rub it on the front of your glass, make sure that's spotless. You can also do the same thing on the inside and you can get into all of the crannies, nooks and crannies and all the crevices quite easily, even if it's a domed crystal. This one is flat. This is sapphire, of course. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Then I'm going to blow it. You'll be surprised at how quickly dust can settle, especially if you're not in a if you're in a regular kind of room rather than an actual lab. And oh, just in case there was something on the dial there, never too much. Now we are going to case it. So how to case it? Obviously the crown is on the correct side and we are just going to drop it on. Now it hasn't gone in properly yet, but it's gone in enough for me to turn it over. So I'm going to flip it around and here we can see there's a little cutout here. You can just about see that where the crown tube goes through the movement. Um, it hasn't gone completely straight. So I'm going to make sure I do not touch that. The, the hairspring there, if you touch it, it will damage the movement. So I always put the rotor over it, but mainly you can press on the rotor, just press it in the middle. So it doesn't look to be flush yet okay let's just check on the other side maybe I did get it flush okay let's try and lift it a bit now this will also help you in case you ever do need to lift it um, I use something like a spring bar tool and I go under here there are various other places you could use but there we go that's better just needed to lift it and press it again and it's dropped right in there and it's aligned itself on the right. Um, now, the nice thing with this case as well, there is no chapter ring. Well, there is a chapter ring of sorts, but there's no lines on it. So you don't need to worry about, is it perfectly straight? And that already looks pretty cool as a stealth kind of style watch, almost like a minimalist style. I love all the circle details actually. Um, looks really nice that. Now, crown. We do need to install the crown and kindly, and I really hope this is correct, the Moki have actually cut the crown for us. Um, if they keep doing this with all of their cases, that would be a great help um, because that does take a bit of effort and sometimes, you know, you could cut five of them before you get it right. Um, so I'm hoping that this works. So where is the crown? Here's the black crown. The crown simply screws onto the end of this. Now you'll see some others uh, suggesting to use Loctite or some sort of thread locker. I have not done that. Um, I, I think I did it once or twice, but more recently I don't do that anymore. Um, I don't really see the point of it because if you can tighten it well, um, it's really unlikely that the crown will ever unscrew. Um, and I've made hundreds of watches now with the same method and it always works. So don't really need to worry about that. Um, what I do use though is your tweezers. This is a clever little trick I learned from Minute Watch. If you push it right to the top there, there is a square bit. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a square bit on the end. Try and get that in. Try and push the square part near the top. And then you're just gonna squeeze it here and it turns it into a vise, which holds this. Now, be very careful with these crowns in particular. I've broken at least two of them by over tightening them and it just breaks the crown. So I'm gonna go as tight as I feel I can go, but not too far, because it. I think they can get damaged quite easily. Um, so just be extra careful with the crowns for these kind of Namoki cases. SKX crowns seem to, you know, screw them on as hard as you want and it doesn't seem to do anything. Here, 
is the channel for this crown stem. So that's going to get plonked into there. And here's when we find out if Namoki have been kind to us. Oh, they've been very kind. That's a, almost a perfect fit. Now that is a perfect fit. Thank you very much for cutting that stem for us. Um, I hope they do that for the for the people making these for the first time, because that's a massive help. If you didn't get that, by the way, and you needed to use the standard crown, which is this long, crown stem, sorry, you're gonna have to cut that off. And to do that, I would just use these, and then it pops off really quite easily. Um, it's really hardened sort of steel, so it, it's very brittle actually. And um, file the end with one of them. So, we now have a working crown. We can test it. Pulling the crown, changing the time. Now you heard that click there, that was the date changing. You won't really hear or notice that in daily use. If it bothers you, you could have set it to click at midnight or something, but you're not gonna hear that. Nice operation, looks great. So. We we'll screw the crown in. I always like to screw the crown in at this point, just in case I put some pressure on it from the sides when I'm trying to put the case back on. So that's the last we'll see of this movement. Um, probably a good idea to just blow it a bit to check, get rid of any dust, but we've been pretty quick here, so not a big issue. So the case back finally now, and I can't believe how easy this was. I'm, Honestly, guys, uh, I know I do this a lot, but I don't, it doesn't often happen this easily. And I think that's a combination of good quality parts from the Moki. Um, and the tools, even though they look quite simple, they are actually quite good, these hand setting tools. Um, I'll go, I'll do a summary at the end of what I wish it had and what I would have changed. Um, so with the, with the, case back gasket I've just put it on the case back itself I often find um, that it's easier to do it this way um, you'll see people oiling them as well I don't usually do that unless it's really dry now most of the new ones are often pre-oiled a bit anyway um, but yes you can oil it not something that you need to worry about that much so you cannot I mean it's so it saves the gasket from getting torn um, perhaps um, and makes it a bit easier to remove but generally I've never damaged one and I've just done it this this way so I've put it onto um, the case back and I'm going to put the watch on top and then flip it over now I'm going to go backwards a little bit until I can feel it smoothly rotating down that just helps the gasket get into the right little groove there and you can sort of tighten it by hand as much as you can. And then this is where this guy comes in. So we are gonna rotate this right down. Now I've never actually used one of these myself before. I used a different version, which I'll show you probably in another video at some point. But well, we've got to align it into the grooves there. So okay, I think I've got it. And then you're just rotating it as you'd expect clockwise to tighten it. Uh, not sure this would work well for really tough case backs to get off but if you're going to be building watches like this um, it's handy it's very small as well again i'll show you the case back uh, opener i use actually right now just to show, give you an example so just for a comparison this is the uh, case back opener i've recently got from cousins again um, this is uh, just a bit bigger and a bit meatier and once you tighten these things down they really don't move so it's a bit easier to you know you get a lot of purchase on it in case you need some uh, really tough 
um, case back to remove. The little blue one will work fine for most watches. Um, just be careful if it's fine, if you're finding it tight, maybe use a different one. This is a little bit too jiggly. You might end up scratching a lot of the back, um, but that was on okay. So there we have it guys, that is basically it. I'm gonna stick the strap on in a minute. Let's give it a bit of a overall wipe down from any fingerprints. Um, but I really enjoyed that little session. Um, I'll probably do this again with other watch builds, but this is, just shows you that, you know, it isn't as hard as you might think. Um, and I've tried to sort of highlight a few key steps here but that watch has actually come out really nice. Um, I've seen these online, but I've never tried them before. So thanks to Nomoki, most importantly, for firstly giving me this watch and also the tools to do it. Um, and just with a few extras, such as the movement holder, uh, the pliers, needle nose pliers, um, the um, file, the nail file, and this guy, um, and perhaps a cleaning cloth, um, you can also do this just from stuff from one shop. So if you're gonna be buying the case or the movements there anyway, why not buy um, the tools there too? Um, a lot of this stuff they also sell, by the way, and you may well have one of these already. Um, so do consider Namoki as a great place to get both tools and parts. If you're gonna be buying anything, um, check out my discount code, that's Seiko Mods Dubai 5, just to get 5% off any orders in the future as well. Um, use my refer referral link below. If you found this use video helpful and you're gonna be picking one of these up, I'll definitely be putting the link to this kit uh, and the various bundles that they're gonna have. I'm sure they're gonna supply different watch styles in those bundles for you guys to choose. But this one is really nice and clean, simple, modernist design. Um, really cool. Now we must do a loom shot of this. So let me just add the strap, which they kindly supplied as well. This is one of their waffle straps. In fact, I'm already wearing one on this watch I've built. Now that you get some extra spring bars there, I don't think they'll be needed. Okay, now, have they supplied? They haven't. Another thing I wish they supplied is the little pins to get into here. Um, now, fortunately, somewhere here, there should be this guy. I Keep these. When you start making watches, keep these because they're so useful. Um, but very easy to remove spring bars from a watch with one of those. Now, let's just check the thickness of the spring bars. Okay, so the ones that came with the strap are quite a lot thinner, so we're going to use those. But yes, Amoki should have quite a few different options uh, coming soon. I'm really pleased to have been chosen uh, to help you guys out with picking them and reviewing the tools. I'm hoping that Amoki do include some of those tools I suggested. Um, and if not included in the kit, they could perhaps sell them separately. I know they already do that for the Rodico, this, uh, the bezel tool, which I'll show you on camera now as well, while I remember. So there we go. Dead easy to put on, and that's already looking like an awesome watch. You know, if you're going to be making a gift for somebody, why not build it yourself? This is like adult Lego, almost, for me. I, I used to love Lego as a kid. Now I really love building things by hand. It's just so relaxing. Get into it and um, be really proud of what you've done. And so I'm really proud of this one. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. This blackout field, I'm probably gonna call it, or stealth, field stealth watch. I can't think of a name right now, um, but I'm gonna get you a loom shot now and I'll show you that bezel tool as well. So I know it's light here, but pretty clear loom shot there. Um, nice strong loom, C3 green loom on both the hands and dial. The hands are actually slightly stronger as well. Um, but this is just charged off a lamp here. I'm sure in direct sunlight through the day, it's gonna look great at night. Also under UV light, it will glow. Um, so there you have it guys. That is the stealth, uh, what am I gonna call it? A stealth explorer. Um, 
Perhaps you can drop some names in the comments. I'll think of it eventually. <laughs> the reason I've got Explorer on my mind is because of this other watch I was going to show you as well. This one could be made by you guys just using these tools. Um, it is a similar silver case from the Moki with the crystal already fitted. You will need to cut the crown to the right size. And uh, it's a day-date movement. And of course the dial comes from a donor watch. So this is what I started doing right in the beginning is buying watches like this. Um, this is a 35 millimeter. This is way too small for most guys. And everyone wants different straps, solid bracelets, sapphire crystals. And this is pretty limited, but I love the dial. So I put it into there. And the only other thing you might need to do is change the hands and the movement to three o'clock. I might even show you that in an upcoming video if you guys like. So just to show you don't need many tools to actually have a good fun time Seiko modding. This was the bezel tool I was referring to earlier. Just picked it up, no bezels here, but um, this type is a lot easier to use when removing bezels. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks again to Namoki. Don't forget SVK watches if you don't wanna make your own or if you do wanna make your own design, um, or order an existing watch, um, check out my website as well, svkwatches.ae. Follow me on Instagram at Dubai, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.